The internet has made it easier than ever to sell to the world. But it comes with a lot of uncertainties too, like how to price your product. Unlike selling online in New Zealand, all of a sudden you need to think about things like currency fluctuations, compliance regulations and cultural differences. We know pricing is nothing new, but the decisions you make when tackling online sales channels in a different market are a key part of whether customers actually buy your product and if you walk away with a profit. Even if you think you've nailed your New Zealand pricing, you'll probably need to rethink it for your overseas market. If you're selling online overseas, it's going to cost you just to get your product to the right country. Returns will be more expensive, and there are a bunch of other hidden costs all over the place. So let's run through some of the most common mistakes Kiwi exporters make so that you don't have to make them too. Pricing mistake number one, not understanding all of your export costs. It's pretty common to overlook a few of the costs involved in exporting when you're doing the math. You might not even know about them yet, so what do you need to consider? Getting the product from point A to point B, including all steps in your supply chain, we're talking international freight, getting your product through customs, and then internal freight. You'll need to know what it costs getting it back again. Then, there are pricing factors like the exchange rates, tariffs, taxes and wages if you've hired someone on the ground. If you're promoting your product overseas, what does that cost? We often underestimate just how competitive it is out there, so you often need to invest to get noticed. Think about agency costs, ads and special promotions. The last one is data and insights. You don't get much for free anymore, so you may need to pay for some insights to see how you're performing. One of New Zealand's lamb exporters selling through an online retailer in the UK didn't want to fork out for detailed performance data. Fair enough, right? But when they didn't get the sales they wanted, they changed their approach. Once they started using insights, sales increased but the cost of getting these insights in the first instance did initially eat into their margins as they hadn't been factored into the initial price negotiation. Pricing mistake two, not knowing who you're up against. If you don't know who the other players are in your market and what they're charging, you're on the back foot. You won't know how much it costs to compete. Get to know who else is selling what you're selling and how much for before you decide on your pricing strategy. There are a few ways to tackle this. You can try to match their price or go lower or higher, depending on who you're targeting, the value or premium end of the market. One Kiwi food and beverage company couldn't even make their product for what their competitors were charging. So they decided to offer something that was more of a premium offering. After testing what they could charge, they were able to get three times as much as their competition and walk away with a healthy margin. Remember, prices change and there are price tracking tools available to stay on top of them and compete. If you're looking to do competitor pricing analysis, NZTE has loads of useful information on mynzte.govt.nz, as well as a competitive position mapping tool you can use. Pricing mistake number three, not knowing what your customers will pay. Taking the price you use in New Zealand and converting it to another currency for your new market may sound like a good idea, but that's not always the case. It shouldn't be a stab in the dark either. You'll need to know what your competitors are charging and what your customers are prepared to pay to price your product and make sure you're covering the costs of selling it. Kiwi exporters often make the mistake of underpricing their product. New Zealand exporters who want to get a quick read on how much consumers in other markets are prepared to pay for certain items overseas can use simple tools like the Big Mac Index, for example. A quick Google search can pull up comparative data on how much common goods and services cost in one market versus another. The fact your products are from New Zealand can win you some points, but they'll still need to stand out on their own. What do customers in the market value and how does this translate to what they're prepared to pay for your product? 
Look for competitive products or similar products to see what prices are being charged and how a customer might value one over the other. For example, if you're a B2B and in tech, see if your competitors in the market have their introductory pricing on the website. Pricing mistake four, prices aren't static. Pricing doesn't have to be set in stone. If you've got an opportunity to play with prices, depending on what channel you're selling on, great. Sometimes more dynamic pricing can help you to get a foothold in the market early on. Those initial sales can build trust in your brand, encouraging more sales. It might involve a bit of testing to see which prices work and getting feedback from customers. Sometimes you can also play with pricing indirectly by creating bundles with more attractive costs or other promotions. You don't have to be an economist to get your pricing right, and you may not get it right the first time, but digging a bit deeper into what your products will actually cost, what customers will pay, and who you're up against will put you in the driver's seat when it comes to making informed decisions on pricing. For more information and help on exporting, please visit MyNZTE.